In the beginning, there was the record. And then came tapes. Then along came CDs. And then it was downloads. And now it's streaming. Are NFTs next? The bidding went on for another 24 hours and cumulatively, the three songs ended up selling for just over 10 ETH, which was mind boggling. This is Matthew Chaim. Last year, he and 10 other artists sold three of their songs as NFTs for 10 Ethereum, worth $43,000 at the time. Okay, so what is an NFT and what is Ethereum and why is anyone willing to pay this much for a song? I'm gonna answer those questions and I'm gonna show you why NFTs might just be a way for artists like Matthew to be able to earn a living when streaming revenue just isn't cutting it anymore. I'm Simon New and this is Building Blocks. To understand NFTs, let's start with the movement that birthed them, Web3. Web 1.0 started in the 90s when websites were mostly about accessing information. If you wanted to post, you'd have to make your own website and get the word out. Web 2.0 started in the mid 2000s when companies like Facebook, Google, and Twitter made networks that let us post whatever we wanted almost effortlessly. But that freedom comes at the cost of constant surveillance from these few companies. So when people talk about Web3, they're talking about taking some of that power back by decentralizing the means to do transactions, host content, and make social networks. The idea being that no one entity owns Web3, so it's democratized. NFTs are Web3's way to prove ownership of something digital, and they've grown hugely popular with the likes of Justin Bieber, Grimes, and The Weeknd all putting their names behind NFT art releases. Although artists have used their platforms to sell NFTs of visual art, the idea of musicians creating and selling songs and albums as NFTs is much newer, and artists like Matthew Chaim are bent on discovering the possibilities. So Matthew was compelled by this idea of Web3 back in March of 2021. He had been disillusioned by the music industry after signing a record deal for a year and living off the advance, but his streaming revenue wasn't making that money back. Yeah, I was living in LA, I was working on my own music there, kind of singer-songwriter doing that sort of thing. I get, you know, these statements from the publishing side, and they're long statements. It's like 90 pages, like I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. It's like, cool, you own like tens of thousands of dollars to us, and over the last like six months, you've earned like 130 bucks. Then when COVID brought him home to Montreal, he started to think of Web3 as another way. He found a vibrant community of artists that also saw NFTs as a way to derive value from their art. And it was just like this, yeah, rabbit hole and like energy that was like kind of pulling me into learning as much as I could about it. It's new and nascent, and therefore it kind of like self-selects or self-filters in people who are open-minded. On a whim, he created Song Camp. It would become a digitally connected songwriting camp where the resulting songs would be sold as NFTs. Songwriting camps really affected me as a musician and really like felt empowering creatively over the years. And I kind of summarized that in the first sentence on the page, which was like, this is a place for music and the new internet to crash into each other. Matthew invited eight musicians and two visual artists to join a Discord server. Over the following two weeks, they made three songs together, spanning genres, each with original cover art. A week later, the NFTs of those songs went up for auction. And then when we actually put it out, and within the first 60 seconds, all three got bid on, I still go back and listen to the recording because it's such like a energy on the call where it's just like an explosion of excitement and realization that this is possible. A lot of, especially producers who are part of it, are very used to making lots of music that never sees the light of day. And the music that does see the light of the day, they don't expect to make any money off of it. The ones that they might make some money off of, they'll maybe see money in 12 months from now. And this happened in 60 seconds after releasing the music. Okay, so what is an NFT? An NFT, or non-fungible token, is a representation of something unique on the blockchain, and in Songcamp's case, the Ethereum blockchain. We'll get into what is the blockchain in a second. When Matthew and Songcamp put their songs up for auction, the winner got a certificate of ownership of the song in exchange for Ethereum's currency, Ether or ETH. So an NFT isn't just a song on the blockchain. It's a certificate of ownership of a digital asset, in this case, a song. The certificate is unique, but anyone can stream the song itself, which means it's a good way for people to support artists while the song remains available to anyone who wants to listen. So why would somebody buy a certificate for a song that anyone can listen to? Matthew says it's mainly for two reasons. One is that it's an investment. NFTs let you bet on an artist that you think will become successful in hopes that your NFT will rise in value as the artist becomes more popular. And the second has to do with a connection with an artist. I bought an NFT from a few different artists and I bought a Genesis NFT from this artist, Iman Europe, because the song resonated with me so much. She ended up sending me like a framed thing of the lyrics and we kind of gained a bond off that. I don't 
intend to ever sell that NFT. I didn't buy it from like a financial perspective that this is an investment and I'm gonna like gain, you know, profit. It was more like just the fact that I get to say like, yeah, I own her first NFT, like that is valuable enough. I was in a position to buy that NFT. I was able to spend some ETH because I've received ETH. You know, on the other side of that, there is this like potential, you know, obviously the space is getting very noisy, but like artists supporting artists, supporting artists, supporting artists, like that's an exciting future. This could almost shift the goal for musicians from trying to become a part of pop culture to creating for smaller communities. You can be in a community that supports you. Within that community, if there are a, com a small intimate group of people who can almost act as patrons, I can kind of find my tribe. So how do Ethereum and NFTs work with the blockchain? What is the blockchain? The blockchain at its core is a linear database that's shared and updated by a bunch of computers in a network. Then each block represents a group of transactions in cryptocurrency or in digital assets, and collectively those blocks keep track of who owns what all the way back to the beginning of the blockchain. So when new transactions are made, they're grouped and added to a block by a user in the network, and then that block is broadcast to everyone in the network so that each computer maintains an identical copy of the blockchain. The public nature of the chain means that it's easily checked against fraud. This has people in Web3 dreaming about a future where transactions are handled instantly around the world without the need for a third party. You only need support from a much smaller group and it can change the way you view it where I don't need to like fit into to the system of one world that is the sort of Spotify complex. And Spotify has the lowest average pay per stream to artists of any of the major streaming services at around a third of a cent per stream. Not everyone's so optimistic about Web3, though. Cryptocurrencies like Ethereum are notoriously volatile, and prominent Web3 skeptics like Stephen Deal think that that makes them a weak replacement for regular money, and that the Web3 gold rush might be just that. Currencies exist to basically be a medium of exchange which people can you know, use it to exchange for goods or services. And because of the hypervolatility of crypto, because there's a central bank to stabilize it, um, crypto is really bad at transacting, and so you wouldn't want to buy anything with it. Elon had a bad day and then suddenly your mortgage has to be refinanced. You can't run an economy on that kind of thing. People always can make money on trading bubbles. The game of poker is like if you look around the poker game table and you don't know who the sucker is, then it's you. And the same thing holds with crypto. Regardless of whether we're seeing the foundation of a new music scene or an overly technical solution in search of a problem, one thing is clear. This moment shows us a glimpse into a world where artists like Matthew Chaim are actually being compensated for their work. And maybe it's worth a glimpse. The world of crypto is constantly changing, and music NFTs in particular are truly in their infancy, so there's way more to cover than I can fit in this video. For now though, I'm Simon New, and this has been Building Blocks.